Morning guys, so autumn is slowly on its way. Still got green leaves, but the colors are starting to change in a, in a good way. So lots of autumn color photography, landscapes, photo shoots and stuff coming. <clears throat> but this video is basically just a um, chat about 10 years this week. Couldn't tell you the exact date, but I know it's this week um, of Sony full frame mirrorless when they released the Sony A7. Um, I never owned one, but if I just jump back a bit further, so a lot of people have used Sony for quite a few years. I've probably used it from day one. Um, and I started back with the Sony F828. If anybody remembers that camera, I loved it. It was uh, really quite good. <clears throat> really quite good in the fact that um, it was kind of like the modern well the, the early days of the RX10 Mark IV um, yeah the fixed lens and everything like that but anyway I then um, had a Nikon film camera at the time as well uh, and then eventually I bought Konica Minolta because Konica Minolta Sony were in the process of buying them out in 2007, I think, 2006, 2007, something like that. Uh, and basically, uh, I was in, that, in the dilemma of, do I go Nikon again? Because I've got a few lenses. Do I go Konica and Alta because Sony are taking them over? And at the time, it was a case of loads of free stuff from Konica and Alta for the same price as the Nikon. And the shop owner that I was used to shop from back in the day um, said to me, Sony are promising big things. And I thought, well, okay, that makes sense. So I went with Konica Minolta. So I had the 7D, in fact, I ended up having two of them uh, for work, but um, great camera, six megapixels. Can you imagine six megapixels today? Um, photos look great. In fact, some of the pictures I look back at today and I think, blah, they're still actually pretty good there. And we know it's not all about megapixels in the real world, but at the same time, it's nice to have the extra detail and croppability and all that sort of stuff. Those cameras then weren't full frame. They were APS-C. The first Sony um, full frame that came out uh, was the A900. And then they also released a lower spec 850. I don't know why, but anyway, um, I had that. I then went to the SLT when they brought that out, which was the A99. Um, they also had an A77 as well, but the um, A99 was awesome. Absolutely amazing bit of kit. Right, sorry. I thought I'd come out for a nice quiet country walk. Dustbin lorry, hedge cutting. <laughs> Couldn't have it anymore. Um, yeah, so up the steep hill. Um, A99, kind of the beginnings of direction towards mirrorless. Um, Sony doing their thing. Canon had messed around with the SLT years ago, but gave up on it because they just couldn't get it working properly, I don't think, something like that. So yeah, back to the A99. Um, walking up a really steep hill, so I'm <laughs> trying to talk and walk up a steep hill is actually quite hard because it wears you out quite quickly because you're not breathing properly. So I've stopped. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, A99 was kind of the, the first sort of direction of change. So the SLT, um, the A900 was an absolute tank of a camera, full frame DSLR, no video, just did what it said on the tin kind of thing, but not refined, um, but it gave a new experience. There was something lovely about it, and it was, um, if anybody owned one, it was just an absolute beast. 24 megapixels, quality was lovely, um, the photos that came out of it were awesome, and it just worked really nicely. Um, you know, just, yeah, I mean, I took thousands of shots with mine, and um, yeah, it just performed brilliantly. Then obviously the A99 came out, which you're saying, 
much more refined camera, uh, much nicer to use. We also had video for the first time. And uh, obviously with the, uh, the lack of a mirror flipping up and down, it had a small piece of film in there instead, which was translucent. So basically it was say 45 degrees. Um, the light would come in, some would go up to the AF sensor and the rest would go into the main camera sensor. So you lost a little bit of light, but in some respects, it was almost like having a mini um, ND filter as such. So that worked quite well. Much more refined camera, like I said, and was a joy to use actually. Really, but another workhorse, um, big and chunky. Uh, the rear screen was awesome. You still have a way that flipped around and pulled out and, and everything like that it was really, really good. Uh, that, so that worked very well. And then obviously the A7 came along. I didn't buy an A7. Um, so I thought there was no point at the time. And then they released the A7R. The A7R was 36 megapixels, no um, IBIS or anything, quite a basic camera. But again, I was thinking more megapixels, the better quality. Um, I hated it, it was a dog. It was less refined than the A900 was. Um, really slappy um, shutter. Uh, it just wasn't nice to use. I, I mean, it worked, but and the pictures that came out of it were nice, but it just wasn't a nice experience to use. Anyway, later on, not that much later actually, they released the A7R2, and that was the huge game changer. Massive game changer, the eye autofocus on it, and IBIS, five frames a second, burst, which doesn't sound a lot now, but it was enough. And, you know, it was the, the sensor on that camera, 42 megapixel sensor, was incredible. And it produced some of the most beautiful photos I've ever taken without really editing. And it was just fantastic. And, you know, it just worked. Uh, like I say, really, really, really nice quality. And the autofocus was better than before. And, you know, it was just nice, um, worth every penny. Uh, in fact, I think I paid for that with my tips from when I used to be a chef. Um, so basically a free camera. So yeah, through Christmas time and, and things like that, I'd saved them up. But um, then the A7R 3 came out. Uh, for me, that's where I jumped up the next level because one, it had the bigger battery. Two, it could do 10 frames a second. And I autofocus was even better. Autofocus generally was better. Um, slightly bigger buffer. Um, and it was just a bit bit better camera basically um, my a7r2 I had two of them in fact the first one I had worked fine I dropped it smashed a 50 mil prime lens off it um, which in, the, in which was fine had the lens rebuilt um, totally fine didn't damage the uh, uh, the mount or anything but the um, shutter mechanism obviously took a bit of a brunt of it so basically um, I had the shutter replaced and everything like that. I bought another camera just for work purposes and um, that shutter failed um, as well. So I think that shutter mechanism was the one that was used in the A7 III when that was released and that's why we had a load of um, unreliable shutters. Um, not all of them obviously, a lot of cameras are still running fine but I think there was a definitely a um, production issue with some of these um, shutter mechanisms. So. Um, the a7 III soon became known as a um, bit of a dog camera because the mechanisms on the um, shutter would fail more often than not. So yeah, that was uh, a thing. So I never bought one of them, but I had the a7 R3, fantastic camera. And then the a7 R4 came out and I kind of almost regret buying that. I mean, the photos that came out of it were amazing and it had that first same kind of wow factor to the the image quality that came out of it uh not not medium format but because the resolution was so high um just the extra detail there and a little bit sharp extra sharpness and stuff like that if you got the if you got it right because suddenly you had a camera that would show up your own flaws so if you didn't get the camera um set up correctly the photos wouldn't be amazing um, once you got it set up and you were used to using it and everything like that, you would realise that actually this camera is incredible and very magical um, quality to the images. And you know, 
it, it was fantastic and it was kind of similar to when I went from 24 megapixels to 42 with the um, a7R 2 so huge huge jump in in technology meanwhile Canon and Nikon are slagging off Sony basically because the DSLR world was still better than mirrorless and and even though Sony were pushing the mirrorless thing and people like myself kind of went yeah that's really cool actually smaller form factor um, less vibration you're getting basically instant um, preview on your um, exposure so you basically don't have to um, fiddle around and take test shots so often and stuff like that so it was a much more efficient um, way of taking photos the fact that you know um, you had more autofocus points you had eye autofocus which obviously Canon and Nikon didn't have and you know it was just a huge benefit um, friends of mine with um, their DSLRs you know if we went out for the day and we were photographing similar things I would have taken it and wandered off already by the time they're faffing around you know setting up the cameras and stuff I'd already taken it and gone so it just shows you the efficiency way wise of mirrorless is, is huge compared to a DSLR um, not saying DSLRs are bad they're still amazing cameras and they still take awesome shots and like a lot of people they won't upgrade until it breaks or dies you know which makes sense in some respects um, for me at the time I had a lot of expended um, free money expenditure so basically you know I had plenty of money because I was working so much so I could afford to buy a new camera when I wanted and stuff like that so you know I very was in a very lucky position not to have to worry too much so an upgrade every now and again wasn't really you know too bothered um, but yeah then obviously the a7r5 is now out we had the a9 obviously came out in 2017 which was another game changer 20, 20 frames a second a stack sensor no blackout so when you were taking photos you could literally just constantly see what was going on um, and that was amazing we then had obviously the a1 which I now own um, which has been the best workhorse that I've ever ever owned and it's it's just a workhorse it's just absolutely amazing you know I don't use a mechanical shutter hardly ever I think I've done a hundred and thirty hundred and forty thousand shots with it now and my shutter count was something like 150 shots <laughs> so the mechanical wear and tear on that camera is almost nothing um, and people will say well it doesn't really matter I was like well it hasn't got to go in for a new shutter mechanism yet you know if you know what I mean so it's just basically as a long-term thing and second-hand value it's just gonna hold its value better because it's done less less photos um, so that camera is fantastic. The A7R5 now, another fantastic camera. They've kind of fixed all the little issues that the A7R4 had, um, which was an autofocus issue with some of the bodies versus the 200 to 600, which I had a massive issue with, um, as did other photographers as well. Um, and I have done videos about it, um, and we could never really get to the bottom of what was going on. So, you know, it's definitely um, uh, been sorted now, which is great. So anybody who's got the A7R5 is just a massive step up in the right direction. You also got the AI chips now, which is um, you know just another chip in the camera, which basically allows it to think a bit more um, about the autofocus points and stuff like that. So yeah, it makes a huge um, huge difference to uh, what's uh, possible um, with sort of uh, autofocus and stuff like that, which is which is great. Um, so yeah, I mean the fact that. Like I said before, the um, Canon and Nikon were just literally like, no, you're doing, you're going the wrong way. You know, um, DSLRs are so much better. Blah 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 blah. And then five years or so down the line, they gave in because they suddenly realised that Sony were winning, mainly because Canon were losing a load of customers because Sony, because um, you lost the mirror box, your camera was narrow, so you could actually put an adapter on, so you could utilise Canon lenses with autofocus on your Sony camera and that really really wound up Canon I think um, and lots and lots of users were selling and I know quite a few people who sold their Canons to go to Sony so yeah huge huge difference in the way we could utilize our cameras yeah we know that um, obviously Canon Nick and Nick now cat caught up they've you know even a couple of things they do are probably better than Sony and everything like that. I'm not being a, I'm not being a Sony fanboy. And they, I chose to use them because of my initial um, purchase of buying Konica Minolta. So, you know, for the, at the time, 
you know what I got for the money so as much as I love my Sony kit uh, it wouldn't bother me if I was using a Canon or a Nikon um, or Fuji or anything like that whatever I decided at the time was right for me so you know we're just so lucky now that we have the huge range of stuff and look at the second hand market if you want to start photography now today and you've only got 100 pounds in your hand you can go and buy a second hand DSLR with a 50 millimeter prime or another lens if you wanted or whatever for 100 quid or less yeah it's not going to be as up to date as you know we might like but if you've got kids and they're five or six or whatever and they like in taking photos you can actually buy them their first camera second hand and you know off they go <laughs> it's mad you know i think my first my first well i know what my first camera was my first point and shoot camera was an altar and um my first slr so back with the film days was a pentax me super and um it made a huge difference then i had to spend i can't remember what it was uh i bought a couple of lenses and a body which was used back then at the age of like 12. i still think it cost me like 200 and 300 pounds so it just shows you how photography's you know gone i mean the market's flooded with the dslrs now that's why they just want to get rid of them so benefit from that the second hand lens market massive huge you know my last brand new lens i bought was the 200 to 600 the second one i bought <laughs> um my 135g master was a open box so it had been opened used put back in the box and sent back my 35 millimeter uh, sigma f1.2 that's a 1500 quid lens and i paid 900 for it in mint condition used with a year warranty so just shows you you know yeah that's still an expensive lens 900 quid but you know it's almost not far off half price is it really and it's nothing wrong with it it's like new um the sigma 14 to 24 f 2.8 that was used i think i paid 480 for it or something like that used so yeah what you can get for the money nowadays is incredible the only thing we did have which um uh was a bit of a uh, a piss take out of from Canon and Nikon was the ergonomics of Sony so obviously the A7 much smaller grip so people's little little fingers were falling off the bottom for me it didn't really matter because I haven't got huge hands my hands are like a normal size and they fit pretty okay on there never really worried you could obviously buy a vertical grip if you wanted to but I never bothered um, They've got better, obviously bigger, bigger, chunkier grips over the years. And I love how the A1 feels. And I've got a, um, a cage on mine. So, you know, it, it, it fits nice in the hand. It's, you know, it feels like a workhorse to me. Um, the A6700, I know that's not full frame, but at the end of the day, that feels nice in the hand as well. Um, so, yeah, they have a, done things better. Um, also, people used to say, the weather ceiling wasn't particularly good probably right but then i used back with the um a900 the a99 the a7r2 a7r3 a7r4 the a1 um the rx10 and now the a6700 i have literally soaked all of those cameras over the years but you know in heavy rain um, you would have seen on my videos that they've been used. Never had an issue. Um, even the RX10 Mark IV, which has got you know a fixed lens, which zooms in and out. Um, I did have one that died. That was actually not that actually died, but the lens needed dealing with, and they actually replaced it um, for the same price. The lens is a goodwill thing. 
when they took it apart they found two tiny moisture droplets on the mainboard um, and the fact that I'd actually pretty much drowned that camera it proves that if it only had those two tiny tiny little bits of moisture in there that's pretty impressive and I'm talking I held it under there's one video I've got up there I held it under a um, flower basket you know the hanging basket and water was pouring down like a shower and I held it under there um, and it was fine so I wouldn't worry too much about using any of the Sony cameras in the rain they're totally fine um, just use a bit of common sense you know dry them with a towel after you after you've used it um, obviously it might get water on the front of the element anyway on the lens but also taking into consideration some of the lenses aren't store, uh, weather sealed at all so the cheaper ones have no rubber sealing or anything like that so just be uh, aware of that um, other than that I'm still going to be a Sony user I'm not going to change um, you see these people moaning about the lack of firmware updates and all this sort of stuff yeah obviously at the time you bought the camera you were excited and you were happy that that camera did that but now because a new camera's come out and it can do something else that your one can't everyone wants a firmware update which is not always possible due to one the cost of actually doing it and rewriting all of the code for the camera to slot something in takes months to do because they've got to test it they've got to there's all the other things involved as well um, right i'm heading home that's me blurting away about cameras uh, for the day so what do you think sony game changers compared to nikon and canon because they were kind of the people who pushed it and pushed it and pushed it um, until canon and nikon had to change if they hadn't changed they would have lost out to sony massively can you imagine the fact you could use all of your Canon lenses on a Sony and if Canon had never actually you know released something it would have been bye Canon hello Sony for pretty much all of the Canon users so anyway well guys have a good day um, click that subscribe button and uh, please share the channel I'll see you soon